Now we've talked a lot on this channel recently about narrow body transatlantic flights. However, arguably no company does it better than Le Compagnie, which is a French airline based in France and for the last 10 years they've been operating narrow body aircraft such as the 757 and now the A321neos from different European destinations to Newark. Join us today at Milan International Airport here in Malpensa as we hop on board Le Compagnie's A321neo out to New York's Newark Airport. Now A321neos are actually seen somewhat frequently going across the Atlantic nowadays. Part of the reason why I say Le Compagnie does it the best, however, is because what you're going to see on board is that there is zero economy class seats. You see labeled throughout all their signage a 100% smart business class. That's because the entirety of their A321s are a 2-2 business class setup all the way from the front to the back. Now because of that, there's only about 50 seats on board their aircraft, and that also tends to drive up the cost, especially because there is no economy class high density seating on board. This flight cost about 1,500 US dollars, and it's relatively similar for their other flights that operate to New York. Now you might also ask about the mileage redemptions for this flight, and Le Compagnie does have their own frequent flyer program, however it doesn't really work well amongst other airlines. So it's really only beneficial if you plan to fly exclusively Le Compagnie on many of their routes. Now the check-in area for this late morning departures was absolutely hopping as people got on board to flights to all corners of the world, pretty much about five different continents, so you can really see a whole variety of airlines and people around this airport. What I did learn, however, is that check-in only opens three hours before departure, and I arrived four hours before departure, so I did have a little bit of time to kill. So instead, I decided to just watch some airplanes and enjoy the sightseeing here in Malpensa while I waited for my counter to open. Eventually, the check-in areas did open off to the side. Check-in areas 20 to 24 are a little extra secure and are reserved for all flights bound to the United States and Israel, as each of those flights require a little bit extra screening but we can see our flight up there, Le Compagnie number 300. So now that we were within three hours of departure, it was time to go check in. Once we got into this secluded check-in area, it was mostly airlines from North America and Israel as LL's Tel Aviv flight was also full of passengers. The check-in line for Le Compagnie was fairly relaxed as there wasn't a whole bunch of people waiting to get on board this flight. As mentioned, there's only about 50 seats, and so it can't be too busy. That being said, pretty much every passenger did line up as soon as we got to three hours before departure. While we were checking in, our inbound aircraft actually arrived from Newark. It looks like it was out at a remote stand, but they were loading all the passengers on buses and this was the first view that I had of my airplane. But since bags were checked, it was off into the main part of the terminal to head through outbound immigration, security, and off to the lounge and the gate area. Interestingly enough, even though there's a secluded check-in area, you do have to head back out into the main part of the terminal. Still pretty busy, however, fortunately, for business class passengers, there is a fast track lane for priority immigration and security. The first thing you're going to head through is just normal security type before heading down into the main part of the terminal. Underneath the dome, you'll find the main duty free shopping and all kinds of tax free options before you head through passport control or not, depending on where your destination is. Since we were out of the B gates, which includes the flights bound in North America, we headed off in that direction towards our passport control. Past all the shops that we finally reached the passport check and immigration control here, where I found out that the chip on my passport has stopped working, which means that I can't go through the automated gates anymore, so I had to get into the normal line of passengers heading outbound. That being said, it wasn't too long as I found myself through immigration and out into the main part of the terminal in a matter of about 15 minutes. Now once you're through immigration, down your first row of gates here, and almost immediately on your left is the Montale Lounge which is the lounge for business class passengers on most of the airlines flying out of Milan, meaning that it can get fairly busy at times. Since this was the lounge for us with Le Compagnie today, however, we headed upstairs and in to the lounge to see just what it had. Now because this lounge is a contract lounge for pretty much every airline that uses Terminal B here in Malpensa Airport, it does have to be a pretty large size with a ton of seating. 
When you first walked in here, you could see the main map showing the floor plan for the majority of the terminal. What you'll find is that there is a large amount of seating spread throughout this and you can usually find a place to sit. However, the longer that I was in here, the more it started to fill up, which is one of the biggest drawbacks of this lounge, is that unfortunately, it can get pretty busy depending on what time of day your flight is, specifically in the late morning or early afternoon. In the center of the lounge is where you'll find the main buffet style dining option. Unfortunately, it was one of the toughest places to record just because of how busy it was. Pretty tough to move around in all honesty, and if you have a backpack on, forget about it. So once I set my backpack down, I went back in and tried to get whatever shots I could of the food. There's nothing exactly filling in here, but you do have plenty of options like salads and charcuterie options. You do have little mini finger sandwiches, as well as a large assortment of drinks, both soft drinks and alcoholic drinks. Now yes, there is a bunch of seats in this lounge, and actually those seats do have a very good view of the ramp. The only drawback is that there's not a lot of charging ports throughout this lounge, and so I found it pretty much impossible to find a seat with charging ports. Fortunately there's charging on the airplane, but it meant that in my short stay in the lounge I wasn't able to charge my devices. The back of the lounge has some extra amenities, there is a family room with spaces for kids to hang out. There's also some workspaces to get some stuff done, including some high tables. And around the corners where you'll find some more of the quiet lounging areas in addition to a quiet room for those people that are maybe looking to get some sleep in their time here in the lounge. They do have showers in this lounge, however interestingly enough the showers are not free meaning that in order to get a shower I actually had to go to the front desk and pay about $17 in order to access the shower. This comes with the shower suite in addition to the bag coming with an assortment of amenities. The shower suite itself isn't the smallest room in the world, it does have hair dryer, it does have a sink, plenty big of a shower, unfortunately there is no toilet which I found somewhat surprising for those people looking to get ready in here. Personally, if you are staying the night in Milan, I'd probably prefer taking a shower in my hotel room and then heading to the airport instead of paying for the shower service. Unfortunately, because I had a connecting flight, I definitely needed to take a quick rinse before getting on board. The amenity bag that we were handed out to use while we were in this lavatory included some cheap flip-flops that were not of the best quality, but perfect if you just want to protect your feet while you're using these somewhat public showers. In addition was a small amenity bag that included things like shampoo and body wash in addition to a comb and a shower cap to have some extra amenities in the shower. However, one of the most unique things was the towel we were given. As the towel itself is not strange, but what it's made of almost makes it like a very thick paper towel. So in all honesty, it did dry me just fine, but it took a little longer to get dried as opposed to a normal cotton towel. They did have some good stuff at the buffet that I took advantage of after my shower since I had about 30 minutes until boarding. This included some salad with some tuna and olives and tomatoes, some of those little sandwiches and focaccia breads, as well as a cappuccino as well. All of this was enjoyed right by my window front view out of the ramp, which was fantastic. Also seeing one of the world's most rare airlines these days, Iran Air, in their very rare A310. Before long, it was time to head out to the boarding gate as boarding was quickly approaching us. As I mentioned before, we could see the airplane parked out at a remote stand, meaning that we would have to head to the specific remote stand gates in order to board our flight. Luckily, it was clearly marked on the screen, so it wasn't too long of a walk from the lounge. Finally, though, I reached my gate, Bravo 29, home to our flight to Newark today, where my timing could not have been better, as pretty much immediately after filming this, they called for boarding for our flight, meaning that I could be one of the first people on board. Not exactly true, considering I didn't get to get on board the aircraft right away, instead we got on board the bus. Now there were two buses of people, I would expect they could fit everyone on one bus, however because of course there's always going to be a couple stragglers showing up at the last minute to the flight, they sent one bus out about half full, and then as we were getting settled into our seats, another bus arrived to the airplane as well.
Before long though, we arrived out to our airplane, a four-year-old A321neo, French registered actually, that was going to be taking us from Milan Malpensa Airport out to Newark International Airport in the New York area. Not that I'm competitive or anything at all, but it was very nice to be the first on board and get some wonderful shots of this all business class A321 cabin. Before long, the cabin did start to fill up, although fortunately my seatmate was on the second bus to arrive, so I was able to get a little bit of content of this beautiful 2-2 all business class cabin before he arrived. Once I got to my seat, it was a chance to take a look around, and first things first I wanted to adjust my headrest as it seemed to be a little bit crooked. Went to go move it, and it slipped right off the brace. So first things first, I had to take a little bit of time getting that back on and secure so I could be nice and comfortable for the flight. Now the seat itself is actually a very comfortable material and it came with some bedding that we'll take a look at shortly with the rest of the amenities. In front of you, you have your main TV screen with some storage underneath and we'll see exactly how much we can fit there as it's not the widest thing in the world. In between the seats, you do have this little privacy partition. It doesn't exactly block everything. However, you can see if you are sitting back in your seat, it does block everything from about the shoulders down. Below that is the literature pocket, which is really just home to a safety card and an air sickness bag as well. There's also a little bit of a ledge here, so if you do want to store something here, there's a little bit of space for you. In front of that is the remote for the seatback television, which has a touchscreen pad on top, in addition to a few buttons on the bottom to control the volume, the flight attendant calling, and the overhead light. Above that is where we find the seat controls, where we can adjust the seat back and leg rest individually, or the presets for fully sitting and fully lying. In front of that is where we find the main countertop, which is shared by both passengers, however there is plenty of space for us to share it for drinks, or to share as a workspace. The main tray table for each passenger does pull out of the armrest here, sliding out just in front of you, as most tray tables do nowadays, you can use half of it, or fold it out entirely for your full meal. It is pretty sturdy as that's one of my main concerns here with these tray tables. On the front of the center console is where the main charging outlets are as you can find universal charging ports for each of the passengers in the seats. There is the main TV in front of you which was highly reflective with windows open, but we will take a look at the in-flight entertainment shortly. Immediately below that's a little shelf for storage. It wasn't huge and obviously for takeoff and landing things fell out fairly easily. Below that is this little tiny footrest, which I found to be pretty small, only fit about a foot and a half wide, and underneath is some storage, where you couldn't even really fit a backpack unless you put it up on its side. They also made us put anything under seat in the overhead bins for takeoff and landing. There's also a little coat hook that pops out here for those passengers looking to use that in flight. Each seat does have two and a half windows, which is nice, and every other window has this fun little design on it. You can see I had this one right next to me on my right, and just behind my console, but over my right shoulder, is where we found another design. Every design seemed to be different, and so I had fun looking around the cabin and seeing what else I could see, like this one that was across the aisle from me. On your right side is where you're going to find a main armrest for you on the right. This armrest is adjustable and can be brought up or down depending on whether you want to be upright or in a lay flat position. Over your right shoulder is where you're going to find the main storage console for this seat. It came with some space to store some little things throughout the flight, including also having the main headset jack, a USB charging cord, a spot to hang the in-flight headphones that they handed out, as well as a water bottle holder and just some general space to store things. And last but certainly not least is showing some love to those individual overhead air vents. As far as the lavatory on this aircraft goes, it's not exactly the most spacious lavatory as it's pretty normal for any A321 variant aircraft. What I will also include is that there's nothing exactly special as far as the amenities that come within the lavatory, although they do have the normal hand sanitizer and soap to go along with the sanitizing wipes that are also stocked. I did, however, appreciate this Le Compagnie logo that was carried out throughout the walls of the lavatory. Back at the seat, and now looking through some of the amenities that were passed out to each passenger, starting off with the bedding. First things first, we were handed out this pillow, which had nice decorations on both sides of it, in addition to actually being fairly plush and comfortable, substantial enough to get some good sleep, especially if you are on one of the eastbound red-eye flights on board. 
also included was this blanket. I found the blanket to not exactly be the most substantial. It was fairly thin, however, considering you have your own control with the overhead air vents as far as how hot or cold you are, it was plenty to keep yourself comfortable if you wanted some sleep. All this was fairly easily stored next to the armrest on my right side. We were also individually handed out these bottles of water, which went nice with our storage compartment over our right shoulder. I decided to put this aside for now as we were handed out pre-departure beverages, of which I enjoyed some nice sparkling wine, although I definitely regretted not getting the blood orange. We were also handed out the headphones that went with the in-flight entertainment system, which were nice and pretty comfortable. However, the thing that I first noticed was how's this going to plug in, considering this was the jack. You can see there's not the usual prongs, just these nice little magnets around the edge of it, and these small little stubs. What I found is that the magnets actually pretty much held it in place as much as it needed to, and the sound quality was fantastic. Basically, I'm assuming they started doing this to help any bent plugs that probably happen over the lifespan. In addition, they came around to pass out these amenity kits, which were nicely decorated with the company logo. Inside the amenity kit was actually a good amount of items, all with the Le Compagnie logo on them. First off was this eye mask that was made of great quality. In addition, we were given these nice in-flight socks with the grippy soles. We were also given a nice Le Compagnie branded pen, in addition to the rest of the amenities that were on board as well, like hand cream and what they call glow cream. There was also this little drawstring garment bag, which seemed as if it was meant to hold shoes that you might want to take off in flight to get a little more comfortable. As we settled in, they also played us their safety video, which they renounced as the most relaxing safety video in the skies, as it was basically safety video ASMR. As we taxi out to the runway, I know that one of the biggest things that's looked at nowadays is that the 2-2 business classes are somewhat outdated. What I will say, however, is that they possibly could make a single seat at an angle since you don't need as much space, but that can still equate to some legroom. Think JetBlue's new generation mint suites. By rough estimates, looking at seat maps of the same airplane, you might be able to double the amount of rows that this plane has since the legroom is skewed rather than straightforward, and since it's a 1-1 setup instead of 2-2, you naturally get some more space and have the same amount of total seats, if not slightly more, depending on the dimensions of the suite. That being said, Air Compagnie just took their A321neos within the last five years, so I doubt they're trying to make any major changes. Also, it would probably reduce the amount of natural lighting just because of how high the walls would need to be between each of the seats. Let me know what you'd prefer to see on board these A321neos as they seem to be growing in popularity on transatlantic routes.
and as our departure turns us away from the Swiss Alps, it was time to take a look through Les Compagnies' in-flight entertainment system. Starting off on the home page, we find a few quick options. First things first, they have advertisements for their new movies that they've just recently added to the in-flight entertainment options. In addition to that, they also have some information about the company, so you can learn a little bit more about Les Compagnies and their A321neos. They also have a very quick way to see the menus, as there's no physical menu cards that are handed out. Instead, they do it all electronically on the seatback TVs. And lastly, on the home screen is some quick instructions on how to connect to their in-flight Wi-Fi. From that, there's also a quick way to access the in-flight map. From the top of your screen, you can open up the full screen mode, which has different things like your flight statistics and a number of different maps. Unfortunately, it's not an interactive map, so you're unable to zoom or sort through these things. Instead, you just have to sit back and watch it play through its normal slideshow. And then in the top corner, you have access to the full menu, which pulls up the assortment of different items that they have on these seatback screens. First things first, they have the category known as My Films. Interestingly enough here, all you're going to find is movies. They don't actually have any TV shows, which I find to be a little bit strange since the flight times aren't perfect and therefore most likely you'll have to end up with one of your movies cut short on arrival. That being said, there was an excellent amount of movies in this selection, all of which could be added to favorites and then quickly found at the top of your screen. They also had a large selection of audio under My Music which had pretty much every genre you could need, and by clicking on each of those genres pulled up a long list of songs from different artists. All of these songs could also be added to your list of favorites, so you could have your favorite music and your favorite movies. Under the My Meals tab, you can find a number of selections of movies and content to watch based on the meals that they stock these flights with. They have stuff about the chefs and the destinations they fly to, as Paris, Milan, and New York all have world-renowned chefs that work together to populate the food and the menus that are found on board Les Compagnies flights. You'll also find the wine list, which includes absolutely no wine, instead including a list of soft drinks, the list of hot drinks, and then the list of other alcohols, none of which including the wines. In addition to the My Flight tab pulling up the map and the My Opinion tab pulling you up to a survey, they also have a Le Compagnie tab which pulls up a bunch of information about the fleet and the company as a whole so you can learn a little bit more about this company as you make your journey across the Atlantic. They also have the Meditation tab which pulls up a number of in-flight meditation activities that you can use to either help you sleep or just help you relax while you're on board their flights. And lastly, they do have the kids section here where you can pull up movies, audio, and games specifically if you're traveling with kids. And now taking a look at their onboard Wi-Fi product, which is 100% free. Since everyone on board is a business class passenger, it's pretty easy to make it so that everybody on board that flight can get access to that Wi-Fi without even having to enter a special code. So connecting almost felt too quick and easy as I just clicked a couple buttons and before I knew it, I was into their service. First things first though, I had to take a look at what the speeds were on this in-flight Wi-Fi and you can see here that it was remarkably fast and worked throughout the entirety of the flight, even including some streaming services. After that, the hot towels were passed out, meaning that our first meal service was quickly approaching. Everything started off with a nice package of nuts, including a drink choice, and it honestly felt like a little bit of a crime not to get a glass of red wine, as it seemed like everyone was doing it, and on a flight with a French airline to New York, it just seemed like a must. Shortly thereafter, the place masks were passed out, meaning that the main course was upon us. And even though I already had made my meal selection earlier, I wanted to take a moment to look at that menu that was for all flights departing Milan. As you'll see, there are two meal services on board the flight. The first one is the main course, the four-course lunch, including a starter, a main, a cheese selection, or a dessert. Following, just before landing, we were also given a snack that you'll see before arrival. And as we made our way across the English Channel, it was time for one of Le Compagnie's chef's signature starters, which was a codfish stuffed zucchini, which was absolutely amazing, and also came passed out, interestingly enough, with the cheese board and the dessert, even before our main course had been passed out. 
the cheese, not only full of excellent flavor, but also wonderful texture, came alongside a wonderful cheesecake that wrapped up the meal, just taunting me in the corner of my tray. And as always, you know I appreciate the custom branding on the silverware. Le Compagnie had their logo carved into every piece that they had passed out. As we waited for the mains to be passed out, we also were passed out pieces of bread, as well as some salt and pepper to go along with the meal. Didn't take long, however, until they had finished serving the starters to every passenger and had begun serving the main courses to each passenger. I went with the fish option, which also came with an excellent side of spinach. They topped off my glass of wine. I also opted to go with a nice glass of Coke with a lemon in it to wrap up my meal. After the meal, they came by with tea or coffee for those who wanted it. I opted to wrap up my meal with a nice glass of coffee. As I mentioned before, the reflectiveness of the in-flight TV screens were kind of tough, so even though it was a daytime flight, a lot of people opted to keep their window shades open. I, however, opted to close it just so I could see the TV screen just a little bit better. As with most transatlantic services, the westbound flights are an all-daytime flight, meaning that most people on my flight didn't sleep. I accounted for maybe 20-25% to 25 of these people sleeping on this flight. I did still want to take a look through the seat modes, however, as you can see first off, the fully seated position that we would use for takeoff and landing. From there, there was kind of a mid-relaxed position. It wasn't a preset, but this is kind of where I found myself sitting for most of the time just relaxing and watching some movies. In addition, of course, it does go fully lie flat as you can see here, also joining with the footrest to make one full continuous bed. Once you do add the bedding, including the pillow and the blanket, it does actually make for a pretty comfortable spot to sleep, as the seat itself is actually remarkably comfortable. There's kind of one main drawback with these two two business class seats, however, and that is the legroom. Since the footwell does have to fit underneath the storage for the seat in front of you, there's a pretty limited amount of space that you can actually use. You can see I can move my feet laterally quite a bit, although they do tend to hang off the side of the footwell on the right side. And if you do try to sleep on your side, you'll notice that it's a little bit more cramped, although I did find this to be a little more comfortable just because I could have the rest of my feet sitting on the footrest. Perhaps the main drawback, however, of these two two seats is having to climb past your neighbor. As you can see here, my neighbor slept almost the entirety of the flight, so every time I had to get up to use the restroom, it meant that I was going to have to climb over his legs very carefully so as not to wake him up. Before long, however, another set of hot towels was passed out to those passengers who were awake as we approached the east coast of Canada and the United States and prepared for our pre-arrival meal. As mentioned before, this wasn't a full meal, instead more of just a pre-arrival snack. Along with a nice cup of coffee and glass of water, it also included this nice little quinoa and vegetable salad. I also opted to go with this nice little sandwich which came full of tomatoes and cheese. Maybe not the most substantial sandwich, but it was plenty considering I was going to be on the ground in about an hour and a half. And as we make our descent here into the Newark airport, one little note as far as seat selection if you are flying this route. When you depart Milan, oftentimes the seat on the right side of the aircraft will have the better view. As you saw in our departure, we had a great view of the Alps as we departed. However, for arrival into Newark, typically a seat on the left side is preferable because you will get a wonderful view of downtown Manhattan and New York City. However, since I had flown into Newark a number of times, I decided that I could do without that view on this specific flight and instead opted for the view of the Alps. But for future views, if you are flying into Newark Airport, maybe you choose a seat in the A seats just to get that nice view of Manhattan.
Now it's time for our final thoughts here on the Le Compagnie transatlantic service from Europe to Newark. Now Le Compagnie currently operates from three destinations to Newark, operating from Paris Orly, operating from Nice, and Milan. Essentially high business class service markets that make these flights profitable considering that it's an all business class cabin. As far as the airline itself goes, they do have the boutique airline thing nailed down. Considering they have no economy class, every passenger on board is treated with that same premium style that you would expect in a business class cabin. The drawback I will say, and I've mentioned this in some other videos at this point, is that these narrow body services are limited as far as how far they can fly, meaning that pretty much you'll only ever find them from the east coast of the US to Europe, and so the flight time is fairly limited. For a daytime flight it was wonderful as I had plenty of time to relax, watch some movies, and just generally enjoy the flight, but had I been going the other direction I'm not sure I would have had enough time to get a full night's rest. The food and wine selection I thought was wonderful. I don't even necessarily drink that much wine, but I found the wine to be great, so it must have spoke volumes to it. Now the seat itself is very comfortable, albeit a 2-2 setup, as I know those are not as preferred nowadays. What I will say, however, though, is that honestly I think if Le Compagnie was to go to a 1-1 setup, even though the seat itself would be more private, I think the cabin would feel a lot more cramped and a lot less natural light. And so as we shut down our engines and got tugged into our gate here in Newark's Terminal B, I was left with my final question, which is would I fly Le Compagnie again? And that comes down to a couple things. First things first, it is still a lot to pay for a transatlantic business class at $1,500. And because they don't have a great frequent flyer program, unless you fly Le Compagnie often enough, you're not really going to have great redemptions. So it is tough to book unless you do just outright have the money for it, which could involve some saving. That being said, the flight itself is wonderful, and so if I did have the money, it is definitely a viable option if I were to be traveling from Newark to Europe. And as we make our way off the airplane, it's time to shift our attention away from Le Compagnie and towards the Newark International Airport. Now we arrive in a Terminal B, which is one of Newark's least renovated and slightly older terminals. It's used almost primarily and exclusively by international arrivals by every airline except for United Airlines, as well as a couple random domestic airlines. So depending on what time of day you're here, you'll often find long queues at immigration and even long delays just waiting for a gate to become vacant. Fortunately for us today, we didn't have too much of a problem and our main delay came from just having to be tugged into our gate. There are, however, great views of the ramp, including all the international aircraft, and in the back, of course, the Manhattan skyline. I definitely enjoy my global entry expedited immigration just to get down to baggage claim and be greeted with a sign telling me that my baggage claim had my bags expected in 20 more minutes. So I got comfortable, enjoyed some of the views, and waited for these bags to start coming out. Finally, after about 15 minutes, the bags finally started coming out where I was able to grab my bag and make my way out towards the exit towards the rest of the terminal. One more view out that great window looking out at the ramp and the New York skyline before we make our way out the doors and into the main entrance of Terminal B. Upon exit from immigration, we come across these flags, a flag representing each country that you can fly to with nonstop service from Newark Airport. 
And with that, I welcome you to the second largest airport in the New York metropolitan area, Newark Liberty International Airport. I'm curious to get your guys' thoughts on Le Compagnie's international business class on their A321neos and how you think this type of business model works with an all business class cabin. But until next week, I wish you all safe travels and I'll see you all next time.